Good afternoon and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, my name is James McKay. I'm the co-host for Hawaii Food and Farmers Program. Again, Justin and Matt have not come back, so I'm here again to sit in and host. And today we're having a bit more of an uplifting uh, chat. Last week we got so much uh, grumpy email about the Ho'opili or Hono Uli Uli, as we should be calling it, we learned from Mark last week, that we decided we'd focus on something a bit more positive this week, which is a, a growing phenomena around the world, and it's a difficult world phenomena, but uh, easy is to grow stuff, especially in Hawaii. So it's a very cool concept that has its roots, pun intended, into permaculture, but it's expanded through a non-profit partner, the Surf Rider Foundation. So uh, joining me today in the studio, we have Jennifer Rodwell, who's an educator at a couple of public, uh, private, Public, no, pr pr public, public public schools. charter, yeah. I've never understood the difference between all them, but in Hawaii and Honolulu, and um, also the Perma Blitz Hawaii. And on her left is Raphael Bernstrom, who is the Oahu chapter coordinator for the Surf Rider Foundation. So, welcome, guys. Thank you for coming down to the studio today. And today, we're discussing something called Surf Blitz. And Surf Blitz is a program that was started nearly a couple years ago. Uh, with uh, a, a sort of a, the, the, the roots had started in the Permaculture Foundation. So, you know, everyone's like, per, Perma Blitz, like, Surf Blitz, what, what is that? And obviously you have different answers to it because they actually are serving different needs. So we'll start with Raphael. So, so the Surf Blitz, it's coming up. We have one on Saturday, this weekend. Um, what is the Surf Blitz? How did it start? Why do people care? Sure, thanks for having us, James. Uh, the Surf Blitz is a program that originated on our end, at Surfrider's ends with a program that we have called Ocean Friendly Gardens. And that's a national program for the Surfrider Foundation that is working to stop stormwater runoff at its source. So it's a pollution control mechanism. And what we do is we build gardens in people's backyards and try and teach them the mechanisms by which you can trap and reuse water rather than having it run off and pollute our oceans actually here on Oahu. On, in Hawaii. So what ends up happening, stormwater is actually one of the biggest pollutants to the ocean. And you can imagine that when it rains, we've paved over so much of our landscape that it accumulates pollutants, whether that's gas or fertilizers or pesticides or animal waste, whatever it is, all of those things go directly into our storm drains when it rains. And our storm drains don't have any filtration. They don't have any way of stopping that before it enters the ocean. So if we can slow that flow of water and build gardens and yards where people can retain the water on site, that's the idea of an ocean-friendly garden. All right, cool. And that concept started in California, right, with the, uh, one of the surf rider chapters in California, I believe. Uh, so it might have been 2013, nearly even, I think that we first saw the San Diego chapter look into that kind of concept. And uh, I think it's a really cool way of using what would actually be wastewater in your own property to harness that and grow, preferably food, is kind of the ideal thing, because th this is the series on food and farmers. So we're actually essentially turning the homeowner or renter into a gardener or a farmer for their own consumption, or even if they get really good, they'll give it away, which would be a good segue to the permablitz concept. So we have a permablitz. I think we understand now what a surf blitz is. Permablitz. Jen, what's, what's that all about? Well, again, thanks for having me. Um, it fits beautifully, actually, into what Raf was talking about with regards to um, using water, because permablitz um, was founded, started in Australia, and then founded here on, on Oahu by Matt Lynch. And it's based on um, permaculture principles, of which one of the main principles of permaculture is looking at things as a system. How does everything connect with each other? So we want to use that water that's coming from the sky and somehow redirect it into our gardens rather than going to the ocean. So that's one, one piece of the permaculture aspect of permablitz. Um, permablitz is a reciprocal exchange network where people in the community can come together on one day and help someone else in the community totally transform their, their backyard into an edible landscape, for example, using permaculture principles and ethics. And once they've done three blitzes, they can then have their own space blitzed. And so through this network, over time, we can essentially be transforming all of Oahu's gardens um, in this um, 
grassroots kind of a manner in which everyone is getting together and helping each other out to transform their yards into edible landscapes and people producing their own food, um, reusing the water that's on their aina and preventing it from running into the ocean as, as stormwater runoff. We just need the uh, edible grass though, right? You can't just have the uh, <laughs> typical landscaping grass, yeah. And that's a very different concept than what we talked about last week, which was with the housing communities going up there. There isn't a focus on food production. In fact, it's kind of the opposite, right? Be, mm -hmm. And you, you see it a lot in the newer, bigger houses popping up everywhere, they're sort of concre concreting everything rather than taking advantage of the space that might be used for food production. So uh, I, I think that's an interesting mix where the, we, uh, the, the surf rider motivation is slightly different, but the, 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 the net end result is that we have a, a lot more local healthy food. And, and for me personally, so I actually met Jen in our permaculture design course where we actually become certified to create some of these plans. I don't know, I'm feeling a little rusty right now, but <laughs> it's, it's all experience, right? But um, it, it, that to me personally was just a transformational experience uh, in my initiation to Hawaii, living in Hawaii. I did that quite early on from moving here. And it, for me, it's still, you know, some of my best friends are people that I've met through that organization. Mm -hmm. And similarly through the Surf Rounder Foundation, I started cleaning beaches even before I was a certified permaculture design specialist. So it's kind of, to me, it's great to see these two independent lifestyle partnerships that I work kind of had one foot in each camp come together in a way I would have never expected. So it's kind of cool. So I want to throw up a little image, that, uh, one of the uh, ones that we've done. I believe this was just a, um, uh, it's a surf blitz. It's probably the say tenth one. There's been sort of twelve done now on Oahu. Um, we might get to the image, but basically, it's it's just a group of people. That I think the biggest thing to me is that just the cool people you meet in these events are just awesome people. And it's not like you're just there to fulfil the mission and go. You're um, you're actually going there to meet people that are cool. So this is Tia. She's like one of the best plant experts I've ever met, and that's what she does. She's a master's plant student. She's too busy to come on the show right now, but you know she's there. And there's a bunch of these people that are just really smart people that know how to grow a bunch of stuff, and this is always in the event we have the food to like thank the volunteers for coming down. So it's a potluck. Um, we try to avoid single-use plastic and in the, the Surf Rider uh, Foundation, we want to avoid single-use plastics as much as possible, but you know, all the containers can get reused. So you work hard, you learn a lot, but then you eat really well. And I think that's, <laughs> and so as a result, that's what, it's kind of like a really healthy drug. You have people coming back, it's just a great community. So is that kind of your experience, Jen? And like getting involved, you're, you're addicted more than anyone, I think I know. And there's no council I know that can get you off this, so. That is true. I, would, I have to admit, I am addicted to your surf blitz and primer blitz. <laughs> um, I just love getting my hands dirty. Um, I love working hard and seeing change happen in, in one day. Such quick, remarkable change can happen. When I work in my own backyard on my own, it takes me a year to get that work done. And to see that happen in a day and people having so much fun while they're doing it, there's always a lot of joking, a lot of uh, play, um, with a lot of really good, solid leadership. Yeah, so on the screen, let's have the good one. So this, uh, I don't know, actually, you might have been away for this one. Were you, were you there, Jen? I'm there. I'm there, so there. there. So yeah, see the guy with the plant head? We've got Raph at the back. So that's the, the logo of the, uh, the Perma Blitz community, or Permaculture Hawaii is their website. So um, we'll probably have that, maybe hopefully a screen that sc go under the bottom at the end, but it'll be on the website later, or um, you can just Google Permaculture Hawaii and you'll find it eventually. So th there's always uh, one of these events going on at some point, either going on or being planned. And I think that's the key thing is, these things, even though when you come as a volunteer, you kind of walk in and you just sort of go and go in the flow and people tell you what to do, but it, it looks very chaotic. It's kind of like that potluck show. It looks like there is really no logic to it, but when you get it all together on a plate, it actually all comes together very nicely, but it, it, it's very structured, organized chaos. There's definitely some, some, some sponta spontaneity in the design, but they, uh, the, it's all carefully planned. You know, the plants are bought. There's a lot of background work that's happened on the team that yeah. Matt and Hunter have kind of grown over the years. And so it's really cool to see this just keep growing. And I, it's kind of a sick pun, but it, it's definitely building year upon year. And I, I think a big part of that we saw, so Raphael was here with Hunter uh, nearly two years ago, I believe, to talk about the launch of this pro project or, or concept with the Surf Blitz campaign to protect the oceans under Surfrider's mission. And I believe since then you've scaled up considerably. 
So maybe if we could talk a bit about you know, what happened in the past and where, you, where it's gone and where you see it going potentially. Yeah, absolutely. I think that what Jen was alluding to as well is there's this really amazing group of knowledgeable practitioners of permaculture that we we came across with this ocean-friendly gardens principle at Surfrider, and it happened to be that we met Matt Lynch and saw this overlap in our two programs. And as Jen said, the, the water retention programs and, and building these foodscapes matched perfectly. So we thought it was a great idea to combine our volunteer workforces as well. And over the years, as you said, we're, we're approaching two years in this program and almost 12 blitzes. The one coming up this weekend will be our fifth this year. And it started out with small amounts of funding through our Surfrider Wahoo program. And we've grown it over this last year to actually start uh, receiving grant monies as well. So through the Hawaii Tourism Authority and the Hawaii Community Foundation this last year, we received a large, large enough grant to fund this throughout the year and actually give back to some of our practitioners, be able to scale up on the amount of plants that we're putting in the ground, the water attainment systems that we're using each time. So it's been this amazing growth and not only just in in the actual funding for the mechanisms that we're, that we're implementing, but also just in the amount of people that are getting involved from multiple circles of life. So it's yeah. like we're now connecting in a whole group of surf riders into this permaculture community and vice versa. And to have that reciprocal volunteer network growing in that way, that's the idea of it as well. Now it's spreading to people who may not have known about these concepts before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I've definitely seen that in just the sheer volume of people, but also materials. Like, just, you know, when we started, first ones I did was very bare bones, and the homeowner had to buy all their own plants and that kind of stuff. Now you see, you know, there's truckfuls of plants, and the, these things kind of sell out like a top rate of movie. <laughs> like, you, you just the email pops out, and if you're not quick on the list, you just you get screened out, and it's kind of like ridiculous. So the small ones, it's, so everyone's like applying in straight away and booking their spot and you're, you're away to go. So it, it is great to see. And I, I, think, I think the key thing is there is obviously the, 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 the funding is, is key to really having the ultimate success because that's really what we want to see is the, the best possible end result rather than just kind of like a sort of so-so result. I think that the transformation and the, the feeling you get after participating in something like that is so rewarding just to see the before and after shots of what was there and what's left once you actually wrap stuff up uh, it is amazing and it, it really is testament to the volunteers that step up so I, I think we have you know uh, unlimited amount of backyards that we can keep doing this in so by, by <laughs> having that evolve and you know I think we, we've really just scratched the, the tip of the iceberg so it, it sounds like we, sh we need to continue on that, that, that whatever the grant process is we might talk about that a bit more later in the show with some other things that are happening in regards to UH. So we'll, we'll cover that soon and we'll come back and uh, chat about where we see this evolving and growing next. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hello and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is James McKay with the Hawaii Food and Farmer series covering for Justine and Matt while they're off surfing and having a great life. Um, they'll be back soon and uh, in the studio today we have Raphael from Surfrider and Jen who's a local permablitz addict. Um, <laughs> Jen has uh, corrected me that I misspoke earlier with the web address. It's actually permablitzhawaii.com because mm -hmm. we're going to make a lot of money out of this someday I presume. <laughs> I don't know, we'll have to talk to Matt about that, but he is a capitalist, right? So, um, so I definitely Google Puma Blitz Hawaii. Um, yeah, cool logo, so yeah, very creative people we have up on the screen. I don't know who did the design, but uh, 
more Justin, talented. Justin Justin Talkwhite actually designed that culture shaka. <laughs> oh right 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 yeah. cool cool yeah yeah Justin okay I've I've actually used Justin on a different project so again another like small community coming together right to do good stuff so um, the the, the, the program, how we've been going right now, I, and we've just covered uh, the evolution of the program, scaling up. Um, currently, I believe it's only Oahu that's doing this program under Surfrider. And that's because the way Surfrider functions, it's a nonprofit headquarters of the motherships in California. And each, basically each area could have its own chapter should they want to go for it and get funded by the, the local or the, by the, the, the foundation, the headquarters. So have other chapters around different islands been made aware of this concept yet, do you think, Raphael? And are they uh, looking into it? Yeah, there's there's definitely a growing interest in it as well. I think that... Here we go with the growing interest. Stuff. <laughs> it's, just, it's good. It's like, Everything's growing. Uh, I'll have to put so, down roots yeah. into a good, good subject. So as you said, starting in California, I mean, it's really taken off in, in California because of the the water shortages that we see there. So there's a, a whole different focus there in terms of the water retention and these zero escapes, which are trying to have non-water intensive plants. But here in Hawaii, there's definitely that opportunity to grow food. And, and the model that we've created has definitely been getting attention nationally as well from our, from our national offices. And then recently we held our uh, Sur Surfrider Hawaii Chapters Conference. And that's where all of our chapters from Hilo, Kona, Kauai, and Maui all came over here so, so we could discuss our, our different programs. And, and we did a big blitz with all that capital, right? The human capital. That was a huge blitz that weekend. I, I'm assuming we took advantage of all those people. Uh, they we, weren't, didn't, uh, we didn't have one overlapping next, at maybe that maybe time. Maybe next time. All right, then. Yeah, but they, they definitely, we were able to do presentations at the, at the conference about this program. And I know there's already interest. We've had some people who have moved over to Hilo from, from the Oahu chapter, and they're working really hard on trying to figure out a way to harness the, the permaculture group groups that are already over on Big Island doing yeah. work as well so that we can transfer this across the Probably islands. not as well organized as we are on Oahu, but I'm sure they mean well. Anyway, just joking. Neighborhood islands, they're all good. Um, so, this, and again, you've, you've touched on the, the reason why it's really ramped up is this grant from the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Um, with that grant, if, if you get it, could that also help the other neighbor, neighboring island, islands, or would that just be for the Oahu chapter? Or it would depend on how it was structured and written, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for now, with with I, I oversee the Oahu chapter, so my responsibility in terms of finding funding is with our chapter. But I think that I, there's also a model that can be used for grants across the islands as well. And HCA, HCF, they both provide funding um, all over the state. Hawaii Community Foundation, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Right. They both provide funding programs that are open to nonprofits all over. And because we have this umbrella 501c3 nonprofit of Surfrider, all of our chapters have that ability to, to uh, go after those types of grant monies. Yeah. And that sounds like a great thing. Uh, for like any, any nonprofit that wants to partner, because that's ultimately this is about partnerships and sort of using the same model and making it better rather than recreating a new model to try to try to do the same thing. So th this sounds like it could be opportunity for other nonprofit partners that Surfrider deals with anyway, and sort of having them come in and sort of organize them to use their resource community networks. To, to join into this hui that's sort of doing the same mission. Absolutely. I think just to, to jump in on the grant funding as well, as while it's really pushing the, the program forward, I think what we want to emphasize too is though that this spreads organically as well, is that like by having funding, we can we can really teach people what to do. So at each one of these um, surf blitzes, we actually have workshops where people understand different components of the process. But the idea is that they take that home with them and they take that to their neighbor and they take that to their family. And that's how it really spreads as well, is organically where they can have their own garden parties because they learned enough at one of our events that then we have it spreading across not only our, our island, not only the other islands, all the way to the mainland. And that's the idea, is that this idea of sustainability spreads spreads through that way. Right, right, yeah. And I, 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 I definitely agree, and it, it's kind of, you never know what you're gonna learn when you go there. I think that's kind of the beauty of the thing. Like, you never know what you're gonna do anyway. You don't know, you, know, you get some email and you have to react to it so quickly, otherwise you can't go anyway. So you don't even know what you've signed up for by the time you know you're gonna do it. Then if you get in, you just appear and you're like, okay, well, what am I doing? And then they're like, over there, and we're doing all this stuff. And you know, you could be planting banana trees or 
doing some weird berm or whatever and then there's always that side that you learn but then inevitably you you're meeting a vegan chef that's telling you how to cook ulu some way and they're just like oh right and then she oh by the way i've just made them there and you're like oh this is amazing stuff so you you kind of that little thing where there's so many light globes the whole day that you it's amazing the stuff you can learn that you will retain and, and definitely share with 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 your friends and neighbors so yeah i think it's a very positive thing so you know i think as this evolves, you know, if the, any watchers or listeners are thinking, you know, how can we get involved? It sounds like e either, either Permaglitz Hawaii or Surfrider Foundation sounds like a great contact points to, you know, share ideas, you know, what resources that they might have that you, we could all use and sort of see how we could partner together. So, um, yeah, that's a, a big plug for the community, I think, to get out there and sort of get, get involved. And definitely, uh, you know, experience, uh, in my mind, is definitely the best teacher. You got, you've got to come out and do one, meet the people, hang out, get dirty, Get in the soil, and then that then it, it changes your whole perspective. I think of really what food and farming is about, and Hawaii is a special place. That's why people choose to be here. So I think it helps you sort of get into the mindset of maybe what you know 100 years ago. Even though we've evolved a lot since then, but I know when we did our permaculture design course, that was for me incredible. That's how we went to all the different areas on Oahu and met a bunch of farmers. And so do you have any like really fond memories that you can go back to in that course and be like, oh yeah, wow, that was. Oh, that whole course was amazing. Um, I don't think I can pick one piece of it. The whole. What thing about meeting me? What about yeah. me? Yeah, come on. All right, that's all right. Well, of course. Yeah. Uh, but Hunter would say the same, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> Especially, he wasn't wearing his dress there, though. So. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we'd have no chance. <laughs> There were so many uh, amazing moments. The whole experience stands out as a um, predominant experience in my life, not only in terms of what I learned, but how I learned, the way in which we learned in these outdoor settings um, with two phenom phenomenal teachers who taught in a very experience-based manner, mm -hmm. and they were playful and funny as well, and very intelligent and very knowledgeable of what, about what they did know. Um, that context was amazing. The food context was as amazing as you can remember all of Jen's amazing uh, desserts she would bring us. Um, just like the juicy brew there. <laughs> <laughs> juicy brew. And um, just the community, how bonded we became as a group. I, to this day, think that that was the best PDC group ever. I'm a little yeah, I've, I've, I've heard it. Actually, everyone says that. Yeah. It's a little disappointing. So actually, it's a good shot. This is Sean actually at the back, the lunatic with the big hat on. Yeah. So Sean, and there you see Paul Isaac too at the top there. So they're they've started a group that's actually really kind of evolved from this whole concept too. So they're and I think they've been on here, I think take a couple times hopefully by now. But uh, friends with farms out in Waimanalo. So this this was a a blitz that happened there. And you know, just being in that environment and, and with those amazing people, and that's the backdrop. You know, so you really, you, you can just stand there and have a great day. You don't actually have to do anything, but they kind of <laughs> appreciate if you do. But um, <laughs> that's why I always go help somewhere else. But um, yeah, so that, no, that, I think that, that that's really where I, I've been really sort of honoured to be part of their their groups and their families too. It's kind of still mm -hmm. um, once you've done something in positive on someone's land, they, they do feel that love and respect for the owner that you do. And it's, it, it is a way to really collaborate and, and, and move forward with Hawaii. And that, that's really where we're at now is, you know, we, we now, for the first time that I was aware of, have, have a, a state food goal where we're trying to be growing more local food. And that, that's something that was just announced at the conference at IUCN. So that, that to me was like an interesting but uh, surprising announcement, but really positive. And I think it'd be worthwhile trying to quantify empirically with data, how to, you know, what impact does this program have on that goal? And what, what is actually going to be the end result, which I think should translate into applying for bigger grants. So, you know, it makes sense to, you know, use the Rockefeller opportunity maybe to part, even leverage the, this kind of grant opportunity to a much higher level, I think. You know, that kind of we see where it's going and where it could go. So and there's also been another group that uh, another cool person, Sam Ruitt, started the, the soup concept, ended up kickstarting another uh, very creative concept called the UH Tool Library, I believe is that was the final name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, obviously doing all this work, you can do it with your hands, but it takes a lot of time, so we need tools, right? So, Ruff, I think you know a bit more about what's going on with that concept and 
ultimately where it could go, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, amazing. It's brand new to the island, um, designed by UH Sustainability students. Um, incredible that they've, they've got it going. They've found space with Reuse Hawaii. And I believe they're launching in November. I actually just got off the phone with uh, their director this morning, oh. trying to figure out ways that we can partner with the, the Surf Blitz program. And it's a great idea. It's a concept where basically they want to have an inventory of tools that is available to the public. And through monthly dues, uh, you'll, you have access to this library. Rather than going out and buying a $500 chainsaw or, or weed whacker. Right, or, they use or, once and then keep in your cupboard collecting dust. Yeah. Exactly. It's like they're, it's going to have this, this opportunity for the public to be able to, if they need something one time, they come in and they can use the, the tool library. And we're looking into ways to partner, as I said, that Perhaps even our tool library from the Surf Blitz program can be part of their tool library. And, and again, it's just about that growing community and giving people opportunities to, to be able to work their land and, and not have to invest completely in those tools that are really expensive for yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, so that's, yeah. I mean, in, in talking with them today, that's part of the design is, is to open it up to so many different parts of the community who may not be able to afford to buy their own tools. Yeah, and that, you know, that, that's sharing anything, obviously, that's, it, it means you have to communicate. Right, which is part of the community, building the community through communication and sharing, and it's, I think it's a great concept. That that that. So yeah, kudos to the UH guys for sort of following that crazy idea. When I first heard, it, heard about it, I'm like, okay, this is going to get problematic, and it probably will. But you know, they're going to get over that, right? It's kind of adapting and surviving. So I think um, we got follow up. The last plug I want to make is for this Saturday. Mm -hmm. So and that's kind of why I wanted to rally people with this show today was we're, for the first time ever, Surf Blitz is doing it at, at a public school. So Pua Oa in uh, Keneohe. Pua uh, Oa. Pua Oa. Pua yeah, that's why these guys are here. So <laughs> 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock, basically. And it's on the website. Details are on the website. Pema Blitz Hawaii. As well as surfrider.surfrider.org. Excellent. So check the well. website right there. And um, yeah, everyone's invited. Kids welcome. Families welcome. Come and just check it out and have a look, really, even if you don't want to do anything. But it's an you know, amazing day. Uh, I was going to go to the Big Island for the Hawaii Farmers United con Conference, but I think I'm going to stay here and do that now. Be carbon friendly. Yeah, it's great. I mean, for the at the school as well as we are. I mean, we just need as many people as possible. Yep. So it's great. Come on out. Come on down. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for coming in. We'll Thank see you at the panel at Surf Blitz. Yeah. All right. So that's Aww. it for today. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>